Hey everybody, welcome back to another Trap tutorial utilizing Autodesk Fusion 360 and the Titans of CNC Academy. I'm gonna show you how to program this part to be cut out on the Protomax water jet. Once again, this is a modified Titan 58M. Just took the basic 2D shape of this part and we're gonna cut it out on the water jet. So I've already gone over the 3D model of making this in both Fusion and Rhino. Cards in the corner to check that out. I'm gonna start by going into the new manufacturer workspace formerly known as CAM, Computer Aided Manufacturing. We're gonna generate toolpath strategies to the design to be fabricated on the water jet. So in manufacture, first thing we want to do, setup. In this setup, we need to define basically two things. The location of our work coordinate system where our G54 is going to be and our stock size. So we're going to go top to bottom, left to right through this setup window. So we're going to change this to cutting. So we're going to be cutting with a water jet. Model orientation, we're gonna leave it right there. Stock box point, box point, we want the top bottom left corner. That's our default WCS G54 for utilizing the Protomax water jet cutter. Okay, we got our model selected, that's our body, there's only one thing there, so that's already taken care of. We're gonna to go to our stock. We're gonna leave our side stock offset at 0 0.04. That gives us basically a little bit of extra material to cut. Our top offset's gonna be zero because we don't need any extra material on the top of that because the thickness of our part's gonna be the thickness of our stock that we're putting in the water jet cutter. If you did wanna have a little more room, wouldn't hurt to make this 0.1, but 0.04 four, we'll get the job done because we're gonna have a 30 thousandths, 0 0.03 width of our water jet curve. So there's still 10 thousandths, which is not a lot, but it's close enough for clearance. So that gives us an X width of about six inches, 5.98 by a Y depth of 3.57, and then our height 0.1. This height really doesn't matter for what we're doing for the water jet. We'll tell the Protomax what our thickness is and it'll calculate the speed. So we just need something in there. We can actually go off of this with a 2D line drawing, but I like working off a 3D model. And then our post process, we're gonna do program name and number 1001 is fine. Program comment, always a good idea. Throw your initials on here, maybe the date. Just something that indicates we're just going to go with initials. That's fine. And then our G54 work offset is going to be zero. I'm going to click OK. And we now have our setup defined. Once again, we told Fusion where our work coordinate system is going to be and our stock size. Now we're going to add the cutting paths. So we're going to go up here to the top, cutting 2D profile. There's nothing else down there, that's it. That's just for running a laser or water jet or plasma. Cutting, first thing we need to do is select the tool. We're gonna select the tool through our samples library. So if you scroll, let me expand that a little bit, all the way down here, you got some samples. We want profile tools in inch and you should find a point two, excuse me, point 021 water jet cutting tool. Click OK, and then we're just going to now select our geometry right there. Click OK, just get a tool path, make sure everything's right, and we'll look at this and see what we need to change. So looking at our tool paths, we got our lead ins and lead outs, we got rapid travel, we're cutting around, so things look okay. But we can see here that we have lead ins that are cutting into our part, we need to change that. The default programming file or the programming um, settings for this profile tool for the cutting is for like a big water jet, so we need to change some of those settings. So to do that, we're gonna right click, and first we're gonna edit our tool. Our tool is going to be the Proto Max 0 0.030 
nozzle. Vendor is going to be Kenna Metal. That's who makes it. It's carbide product ID. We don't really care about that for right now. Product link, we're fine. Cutter water jet, our curve width is actually going to be 0 0.030. This is more of an approximate number. This number is actually adjusted on the computer that controls the machine, but this is giving us a more accurate idea of what's it going to be. Nozzle clearance diameter, that's fine. Holder, that's fine. Feeds and speeds, we're actually going to use machine uses quality. So we're getting rid of our feeds and speeds. Impros processor is fine just like that. Click yes, right click, edit. Now see we have our 030 water jet tool. Cutting mode through auto for right now, that's fine. We'll go back later and assign our cut values or our quality values for our cuts. Geometry is right here. Once again, to select this geometry, I just clicked on that right there. We could individually select these chains, but it's just a lot faster to click right there all in one shot. And we do need some tabs on here to keep these larger pieces from falling out, getting caught, and I'm gonna show you how to use tabs. So we're gonna check that box. This default tab width is way too wide for what we're doing on our water jet. So we're gonna cut this in half, 0 0.05. Still bigger than our curve width, but we don't need that point one. A big tab is going to be hard to break off. Tab position, I prefer at point, and then I'm going to put a tab right there and right there. So that's all good. Ignore everything on here. Those are all good. And same thing with passes. Ignore everything on this. Don't really need to change anything at all. And our last tab is our linking where we do need to change. Remember our lead-ins, they were a little bit too big and they were cutting into our part. We're going to change our lead in sweep angle to 90 degrees, more ideal or preferred for a water jet. And that lead in distance, that 0.19, that's really big. We don't need to go in that far. We're going to go 0 0.06. That's like double the width of our curve. Entry positions, this is basically where do we want to start cutting? And we're going to start cutting right there. That's going to be where that is going to be a entry, lead in, and lead out. This one's going to be determined by the tabs, and then these holes don't matter. Click OK. And now let's look at our toolpath. We can see now our lead in is much smaller. It's a pretty common problem when you're programming your part is that your lead ins are too big, so you got to shrink them down. Our lead ins are also on the correct spot in the open space where our part is not and we are going to run a simulation we're going to turn on our stock we're going to turn off the tool so you can really see what's happening click play looks like it's going to cut our holes out You can see there's our tab right there holding these two big chunks still in the part. If this whole entire part was pretty small, we would want a tab to keep it entirely intact within the stock, but it's rather large. It's not going to fall through the slats, so that is fine. Okay. So. That's basically all you need to know. Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into programming the water jet. So with a water jet, you have cut qualities. Basically, a higher cut quality is going to be more dimensionally accurate, but it's going to take longer to machine. Therefore, it costs a little bit more, more money to make. We want to have our four holes at high quality because those holes are critical and maybe this one honestly I don't know what this part does it's just a widget to me but we're gonna make our holes a high quality because this inside right here that isn't that critical we just cut that material out to reduce weight and then the outside we have quite a large tolerance on that so if I go into here edit and I go to cutting mode and I go high quality this will change everything we don't need everything to be on high quality. So I'm going to take this. I change it to high quality. I'm going to click on it and rename it to 
hi, enter. We're going to right click on it, duplicate, right click, change this to low. Low is in low quality. So my high quality is going to be my whole, so I'm going to right click, edit. I'm going to go to my geometry tab, still high quality. And deselect the chain because now I don't want everything, I just want the holes. Right there and there. Notice it's still taking that tab feature. We don't need tabs on those small holes. We also want that one. You got to pay attention when you're manually selecting your geometry that you get your arrow on the correct side. The arrow indicates where the tool is going to be and we want our tool to be on the inside of our tools here we're cutting over here and we're going to make our part or make that hole a little bit bigger than what it needs to be based off of the curve width so arrow on the inside remember don't need anything on here and our linking lead ins and lead outs are good click ok and we now just have the tool paths if I simulate this feature right here it's just going to cut out the holes and those holes are going to be at the high quality click close low quality I'm going to right click edit basically the same process I'm going to change this quality to low go to geometry deselect everything because we're individually selecting and we're going to make this our low quality Click OK. Still got our tabs. You can still see our tab right there. And let's just duplicate that. Practice through repetition. Duplicate. We're going to make this sometimes it's a little tricky renaming these. Got to do a really slow double click. That's going to be medium. Right click edit change this to medium quality geometry don't want those two chains we want the outside no tabs so we're going to uncheck that entry position we want it to start at that point right there click OK we are good to go. So we can also maybe change this low with tabs. And what's going to be nice about this part, you basically have the recipe for low quality, high quality, medium quality, and also something with tabs that you can reference and copy and make a template and paste this onto any design that you want. Because this is basically the settings for the protomax. So if we run our simulation of the entire thing, simulate, cutting that out. Notice this order will dictate what gets cut first. We obviously want to cut out the inside geometry before the outside geometry. And if we go to info and statistics, one minute, 20 seconds, ignore that. We're going to rely on the simulation statistics provided by the Protomax Make software. So we're going to click close. Going to go ahead and save that. Haven't saved in a while. And that is everything with the programming of the part for the water jet. Once your program has been verified, you ran the simulation, we now need to post-process your G-code. So we're going to select the setup one, click the G1, two, G1, G2 button, and the post-processor. In Fusion, we're going to go into installed post library. And if you find the installed one, this is going to be in all versions of Fusion for everybody. The Omax one works just fine. You save that, you get your G code. 
You could also, if you want to be a little more fancy, we're going to open the Autodesk HSM Post Library right here in this link. This is where we can access a lot of different posts that are more up to date. And we're going to type in Proto Max right here. Looks like it was changed 313 days ago, downloaded 91 times. Gonna download that onto the desktop. Upload that into your assets in your cloud library. I have a separate video on that. So that will be in the cloud posts or I think we can use personal post library, browse it, can we find it this way? Sometimes this is easier than uploading. Actually, if not, I can't find it. But the Omax one that's built in works just fine. This is a little overkill, I guess. I don't know what the difference is between the Uh, I don't even have it on this computer. So back to the installed. Just forget that ever happened. Go ahead and just use the Omax post processor. Click post. Save it on the flash drive. I'm going to save it on the desktop. Best to give it a file name that's not 1001. And then we have the G code for the Protomax. That is it for programming the part or any part basically for the Protomax Waterjet Infusion 360. Thanks.